Greetings, my fellow intellectuals and bookworms. Today is time for another unscheduled video. Um, it's going to be a fan theory this time. If you, and before you say, Sean, that show's for children. What are you as an almost 19-year-old adult doing talking about it? For that, I say, fuck you and get the fuck out. And second of all, um, as a kid, I really loved that show. And I was just thinking about it recently. What if... Avatar Aang is secretly evil. Now, before you immediately click and give me a shit show about how that's not true, think about it. Let's let's discuss the info. First of all, first of all, even though he doesn't want to kill people, um he shows countless disregard for overthrowing the Fire Lord and basically fucking up the post-World Order. I mean, look at what happens after him. The two water tribes are on the brink of civil war. Um, even after Aang dies, Zuko has constant attempts to overthrow him. Um, Zuko is constantly in trouble, both politically with flagging support and assassination-wise. The Earth Kingdom is basically fractured as shit, with no central authority, and stands a decent chance of toppling. Even with the Republic of Nations, for most of its history, it's weak as fuck. And it functions more like a colony of the other four nations than as any real independent government. And so, essentially, he's willing to end the 100-year war through whatever means necessary, but the post-war world is honestly not better. Yes, there's more industrialization, for example, in Republic City and the United Republic. But think of it this way. All that technology came from the Fire Nation. And the rest of the Earth Kingdom is still, for the most part, impoverished. The Southern and Northern Water Tribe are const constantly, essentially, vying to kill each other. And so... Maybe the greatest irony is that rather than bring, bringing peace and stability after ending the 100 years war, he just created a huge fucking power vacuum that came back to bite him in the ass. I mean, before I get accused of being a supporter of fascism or its equivalents, let's look at it this way. Um, from, from the people of the Fire Nation's perspective, Ozai was their leader. They chose him to rule. And then the Avatar comes in, um, basically does anything short of killing him, and throws him in prison. Do you see how over it, it goes from being a benevolent action to being essentially a coup attempt, and basically overthrowing a legitimately put into power government? And also, let's think about it this way. Zuko is completely unable to essentially rule the Fire Nation. He's unable to prevent things from blowing up. The Yudao crisis is a good example. And... And... He is just completely unable to do anything about it. Now, I get that he understood that continuing the war was untenable, but at this point, the Fire Nation knew they were on the verge of victory and they quit because simply because leadership transferred. Now, if I was a former soldier of the Fire Nation, I would be fucking pissed. We were so close to victory, and all of a sudden, 180. Now, are the Fire Nation secretly the good guys? Maybe. Now, yes, they did commit genocide against the Air Nomads. But, it's basically the equivalent of, I don't know, the U.S. taking out Iraq for having weapons of mass destruction. In this case, the Avatar is a weapon of mass destruction. Um, and let's be honest, yes, sp spreading peace and prosperity was all well and good, but it doesn't mean the same thing if it's by the butt of a blade. Well, let's be honest, sometimes change needs to come by the butt of a blade, by the side of a blade to have any impact. And you can argue that their methods were cruel and or horrible or genocidal, but, but if you look at their actions, they aren't. Why would a completely evil nation, um, instead of killing any Earth Kingdom prisoners or Water Tribe prisoners, immediately put them in detention camps? 
why would, when they occupy the Northern Water Tribe, would they not immediately start murdering and or killing people? They don't. Um, they basically just put up their flag and have patrols of Fire Nation soldiers walking around. They don't, for example, proceed to get rid of the previous leaders. They don't proceed to execute people. They don't proceed to brutalize people. They don't even proceed to enforce their standards or way of life and or their authority on them. They are willing to exercise loose control in the short term. Does that really sound like an evil na nation? You So... And Ozai is clearly unash unashamedly evil, and I won't even bother defending him. But his daughter Azula? Honestly, no. I mean, first of all, she never kills anyone, and she has the power to do so in a lot of instances, probably, probably could have, but she never does so. You might say, what about that time when Aang died in the Avatar state? Well, first of all, um... First of all, you have to, you ignore the context of that. He didn't die permanently and kind of and it was kind of entirely defensive. So, now granted I haven't seen the show in years, but to me that suggests more of a benevolent person than we are led to think. And so all of a sudden Avatar the Last Airbender is no longer about overthrowing an evil government. It's all of a sudden about someone who abuses her power, overthrows an actual elected government, and in the process fucks up the future and creates more chaos than just allowing the Hundred Years War to continue. So maybe the world would have been better off if the Fire Nation actually won. I mean, they were very close to. They conquered most of the Earth Kingdom at that point. The Northern Water Tribe was under their control. Omashu and Ba Sing Se had fallen. I mean, the only thing that left was was pretty much the Southern Water Tribe remnants and a few mop up in the Earth Kingdom. Now, now I don't claim that their rule is not based on oppression. It's just that they might actually be doing things for the greater good, and. So now it's all of a sudden a story about someone who overthrew and practically killed a popular government, installed his own puppet figurehead who's widely despised and the people don't like, and proceeded to tell them what to do, to dictate terms. I really imagine that the world after this and in between the Legend of Korra is basically fucked. I imagine the Earth Kingdom collapses under its own weight because King Boomy is only... because there's really no one left to pick up the pieces. I mean, it, it seemed to be a fractured political entity even in the best of times. And who was leading it? King Boomy of Omashu? And a new Earth King who is incapable as fuck? Yeah, not hard to see the Earth Kingdom collapsing. Um... Water tribes, the southern water tribe is so devastated that there's almost nothing, no people left. So it, it could very easily collapse into political chaos. I mean, the Fire Nation, I imagine, will, after all this punishing it gets, will receive a heavy revarkanism strain in its politics in which they say all of... The Earth Kingdom rightfully belongs to the Fire Lord because we conquered it with sweat and blood and we gave it up for no reason. The Northern Water Tribe's ours. I also imagine there'll be a huge upswing in Fire Nation nationalism. People saying, we should continue the war. And if you look at it, that's kind of what happens. New Ozai society takes over and in a lot of instances has a lot of support and they want to put Ozai back on the throne. Now, granted, Ozai's never coming back on the throne simply because he no longer has any power. And the only thing the Fire Nation respects is power and strength. So since he can't bend, he's never going to be on the throne again. But, but I honestly see them standing a decent chance of winning in this alternate and or realistic scenario. Now, they don't necessarily need to put Ozai on the throne. No, they just need to topple Zuko, which if you look at him, even his loyal ministers hate and or despise him so he's basically resting on a house of cards his popularity is not too good among the people either 
It's probably pulling something like 11% or some number like that. Now, as I said, Ozai can't take the phone. Iroh is kind of too old and or doesn't want the phone, and he wouldn't be amenable to continuing the war. So that pretty much only leaves Azula, a strong leader who, despite being seen as evil, can actually manage shit. Now, yes, she broke down, but, I mean, she basically had a huge weight on her shoulders and she was mentally unstable to begin with. If, if she received the phone early in a coup or anything like that, she might be able to easily manage it. In addition, um, Zuko kind of left the Fire Nation in, with a leak, with a weak leader when the nation needed a strong leader. He put himself in a terrible position, and he put his people in a terrible position. So, I imagine that as soon as Aang dies, everything goes to shit. The Fire Lord, Zuko, either follows him in death, or is overthrown in a new Ozai society coup. The Earth Kingdom collapses, the Northern Water, the Southern Water Tribe collapses, and everything goes to shit. But that's just a theory. A TV theory. And cut. Like, comment, and subscribe if you've not done so. This is Sean Harnett, wishing you a good night.